So, hi everyone. Hey. All right. <laughs> so this is that's that's me hangry, uh, which I'm getting now. So I'll I'll keep it short. Um, uh, I've been I've been doing a bit of coding lately, and uh, I wanted to talk about this problem that's near and dear to my heart, which is software licensing. I love it. Uh, intellectual property is the worst thing that happened to human humankind today. <laughs> it is my, my my life's mission to end it. Whoa. So, so with that understatement, let me continue. Um, imagine that you're working on a project, right? And you're like, hey, this is open source. Everyone should use it. It's awesome, and it's available under you know whatever random open source license. It's free. But somebody goes like, well, well, that's cool. But wait a minute, like, what about all the dependencies? What do they use? And well, then you're like, I don't know. Who knows, right? Nobody checks that stuff. So you kind of just like, you know, pretend you don't have this problem. <laughs> now, the problem gets really bad because NPM is awesome. Uh, with NPM, you have a lot of dependencies. So I just did a little experiment uh, to show like how far this goes. And if you if you just like see these commands here, so if you just do create, create a new project uh, and then you install like a, a you know a reasonably simple stack like Express and Browserify, and then you just Lint some stuff with standard, and you you know use ES6, so you have Babel, and then you test, of course, with uh, Karma, Mocha, and Chai, right? This is reasonably reasonable stuff. If you run, you know, uh, if you check like how many dependencies do your dependencies have, and then all the way down, right? <laughs> you're like, okay, well, let's check, let's check it out, and you're like, hang on a second, my computer is not the fastest. Okay, so there's a lot, and then you're like, okay, well, oh, shit, there's more, and then like, it just goes. And, you're like, oh God! You're like, ah. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of dependencies, right? So it's crazy. Um, I have no idea what license they all use. So I cannot guarantee that my application is actually free to use, despite the license that I put on my code. That's a problem. Um, now, with just this stack, you have about 1,470 something uh, dependencies, and that'll change tomorrow because somebody's the dependencies will increment their version, and if you do npm install tomorrow, it'll be slightly different. Am I right, Tim? Okay, okay. Fact check. <laughs> cool. So this is what I, you know, kind of like dependency hell. There's like callback hell and no dependency hell is a similar issue. <laughs> where you just have way too many dependencies and they've all got like, you know, different versions all the time and they keep breaking things. And so, how do, you know, so basically, um, there's a couple of different things that are going on here. So if, you're, if, you're, if your dependency is, uh, is not totally, how do I Okay, so if you're the dependency that you're that you're using um, is like version two, and they're already at version five or something, um, what's going to happen is that if you patch some problem in that dependency, if you ch if you fix the license uh, for, for that for that package, or if you fix some other bug, and they accept your patch, it's going to go into the latest version. It's not going to go back back into like version two. It could, in theory, npm could do that, but nobody that I've ever seen does that. So. You know that's just sort of how the tools are set up for people to to, to work, and it's a problem. Um, the other thing is, if your dependency that has a bug is like a sub dependency of some other sub dependency of some other dependency or whatever, uh, good luck, right? Uh, if you fix that, and then then you have to like convince all these other people in the chain to bump the dependencies of their package JSON, right? They, they have to bump the versions there. It takes a long time. It's a lot of effort. I, I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, and it's just like really, really. Dependency hell. It's un, it's like that's why it's like unfixable bugs. Um, and then just generally, there's a lot of projects where the maintainers are awesome people. They they produce awesome code, but they just don't maintain their packages. Uh, I'm not gonna name names, but I've dealt with a lot of these guys in the past, like in the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's it's and you know you actually just don't deal with them because they just ignore you or whatever. And they, they probably have valid reasons. They're awesome developers who have too much stuff going on to care about like small little people. Uh, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so there's there's right now there's solutions like uh, Greenkeeper that just came out recently. Uh, I think it was announced at like a JS conf or something. It's, it's a really really cool tool. Um, it just creates a lot of work for you, like a lot of it automates a bunch of stuff, but it creates more stuff out of that. Um, it's basically like Gymnasium or David David DM if you've seen those things. So version I uh, basically they, they they basically check the dependencies of your project and then tell you when some of them are getting out of date and then they send you an email. And Greenkeeper is a little bit better. Um, it sort of does a pull request, so I don't know, but but still, it's still it's still telling you like, oh, do more work, and you're like, but but this thing worked just fine. Why are you making me do shit work? You should read that article; it's really good. 
Say what? Yeah, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, the, you get badges, and you, now you can get pull requests, and you know, it's just a, it's just like you know pointless work. That's what it feels like. <laughs> so, all right. Now back to the the legal problem, right? That's the main thing that I'm trying to talk about. Um, similar to the dependency hell, uh, this gives this kind of gives us a license hell, uh, and the reasons for that are because at first, like in the beginning, before there was anything, uh, npm had this property called licenses in your package JSON file, and that didn't really work out. Like that, that's been deprecated uh, because it was very confusing what you have to put in there. Some people put like the name of the license in there, or a URL to a license, or a file name of a, with the license context in it. Uh, some people who didn't speak American they used like different typos and you know, different kinds of spellings and whatever. Uh, and some Americans probably also did that. Uh, so then there's other things like like different, different projects would use files called license.txt or Markdown or or you know old schools like copying.markdown or different in different ecosystems they'll use different files for that. So it's not really uh, like you know easy to guess like what if your file what if your project has like, all four of those permutations right? So good luck. Um, so it's really really uh, annoying to have this kind of ambiguity when somebody asks like uh, you know you have to make like sign a contract uh, that says can you use this software. Uh, you have ambiguity. That's never a good thing when you, you know, when, when lawyers ask you questions. Um, so nowadays we've got this one property called license in your package JSON, and if you have that, that's good. Now you also have to make sure that the value of that property is good, though. So are we legal yet? Probably not, right? There's a lot of these legacies floating around, but it's definitely getting better. And so npm is starting to tackle this, uh, this with this license property. Um, so right now, if you just do npm init. It'll generate by default this license property with value ISC, and that's totally cool. That's totally fine. Um, but there's all these other licenses like MIT, BSD, Creative Commons, Apache, GNU stuff. So what's going on there? Well, they're okay, but ISC, ISC is pretty much the best choice. Um, so for, for for a lot of reasons, if you if you look at the ISC license, it's, it's like two lines. It's super easy. Um, all the other ones are longer. Um, <laughs> No, no, that's that's annoying. Like, I don't want to have to read a whole bunch of text. Like, uh, if you if you do look at the reason why ISC is so short, it's because the Berne Convention of like the 19th century, um, when slavery was still a thing. Well, you know, that's where intellectual property comes from. That's my point, right? Um, so, it, at the time, it was it was a bit dodgy, but the, basically that, that's all been simplified, and the ISC is pretty much like the simplest English language known to man. Um, if you want to just not fall under the copyright system. So there's another thing called copy left, which is sort of this like, you know, word hack um, that that has some issues if you want to like use it commercially. Some people will complain about it and gripe about it. Um, some licenses have like attribution, which is a huge pain in the. Um, and then there's there's like the Creative Commons stuff, which is a cool initiative, but they also have these little checkboxes when you choose your license to make it non-commercial or um, what's it what's ND again? Non-derivative, right? Yeah. yeah. So. So non-commercial and non-derivative, they're basically evil because they're, they're just totally not open source licenses then, if you can't do whatever you want with it, right? So just use ISC, please. Okay, there's a whole flame around that. I'm not gonna get into that now. But back to the license property. This is like totally awesome. Um, if, you, if, you, if you put a string in there, you gotta make sure that it's what's known as an SPDX identifier. Uh, so SPDX is the specification that was published by the Linux Foundation, who have faced this problem for like you know 100 years or something. Um, <laughs> whenever people create like Linux packages, so they have to like describe the licenses and make sure that everything's cool. Especially like if you look, look at the like the whole what was that was that really crazy one the Gentoo whatever I don't. Know. Some of these guys are like really cool, uh, and they're very very strict about it. So they they've solved this problem like very very thoroughly. Uh, there's like a whole specification um, called SPDX, and it's basically, I mean. Node only takes a couple of things out of that. The first one is license identifiers. And that's really simple. That's just short codes like MIT or you know, GPL-3.0. Um, it's basically codes that we can all agree on. So rather than like somebody calling it MIT-X11 or MIT-X11, or you know, people just say, like, no, it's just MIT, OK? And everyone uses the same thing, easy to understand. There's a whole list of these licenses. If, we have, if I have internet access, I can. Right, so there's a bunch of licenses here. So they all have, you know, so instead of typing out like Creative Commons attribution, no derivative, or some random you know, hyphenation and all, all that, you just use the short code. And by doing so, you're telling NPM that your license is the license that's listed out in the full official license text by the SPDX, you know, Linux, uh, Linux Foundation and all that stuff. So, so you don't have to like dump this text in your repository, you don't have to put headers in your source files, 
all this, you don't have to keep updating, you know, like these copyright timestamps and all that kind of stuff. So this, this just solves those problems very, very simply with a license property where you put this thing into it, right? Sim str uh, straightforward. You can also have a project where you use multiple licenses. Like some projects you can choose like, you know, like, like ISC license or the, the WTFPL, which is really cool. That's probably the second best license you could use. Um, but you can do more complicated things um, if you're really annoying. Uh, I, don't really, I don't really know what this means, but there's like a Bison exception. I guess it's like some cattle thing, I don't know. Um, <laughs> anyway, so don't bother with, the, with these things, but they, they're supported and they're like a standard for it and nobody's gonna like misinterpret it. It'll just work. Um, so, so I was looking around like, how can I use this in my, in, you know, in, in my daily life, as, I, as anyone would, right? Um, and there's this really cool tool by a guy uh, whose name I forgot, but he made this thing called Node License Validator, and it's like on NPM. So what you do is you install it, and then you just run it, and it has this thing called, you know, you have to like put a little attribute in there, uh, dash dash deep, um, and then you can tell it like which license do you use, right? So if I'm using ISC, I'll just I'll say okay, I'll run that on my project, and if I go no license validator. Lazy. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Alright. Give it a second, okay? This is only an SSD. Alright, here we go. So these are all the licenses that are not compliant with ISC right now. So these are all invalid licenses. So uh, okay. But you know, I can see like there's a bunch of things, a bunch of licenses here that are called like MIT. Uh, this, there's things like Apache 2, BSD3 clause. I can recognize that these are available in the list of the SPDX licenses. Um, so, okay, let's, let's, let's see, okay. We, we, we'll, we'll, we can just specify a config file, you know? So, in our, in our config file, we'll, we'll, we'll say like, you know, we think, we're not lawyers, I'm not a lawyer, but I think like these licenses are pretty much compatible with ISC, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll use whatever code is published under those. If I do that, then, you know, I've got my config file, and I run that, then it'll say, okay, uh, now there's a bunch of bugs, right? So all these licenses, uh, like BSD is actually not in the license list. It's kind of annoying because a lot of people use it. Um, so now our problem has been narrowed down. Like we've basically been from like 600 something out of the 1,400 packages that I'm using. Uh, I, I already cut away like 900 of those and said like, these are all fine to use. But then out of the 600, I've cut away another like, you know, uh, 550 or so. And now we've got, still, and, and those are all like, I'm fine, I'm, my license is compatible with those at least. So now I've got 55 like problems. And um, that's sort of been uh, a bit of a hell for me. So that's my, 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 my dependency hell again, right? So, but luckily we've, we've at least turned the, the license hell into a dependency hell, which is a problem that a lot of people are facing <laughs> and solving. So I'm not alone. Um, so what I've been doing in the last like week or something is, for, for my little you know personal project, I've set up uh, like a, an issue on GitHub where I just track all, all my 55 or whatever uh, <laughs> broken licenses that I'm not legally allowed to use, uh, and I've started filing issues everywhere. So I've become like a huge pain in the ass on, on, on GitHub for, for a lot of people, and I'm, I'm sort of tracking. And I, I'm, I just, sometimes it's really cool because like you know I had a, I did one um, <laughs> on, on, a, on a rather opinionated person. <laughs> So I was trying to be as polite as I could. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, okay, uh, and, then, and then he goes like, oh, oh, that hurt, that really hurt. Oh, I didn't, oh. Anyway, but I was like, okay, I'll try to be optimistic about it. So I was like, okay, thank you for, you know, and then I, I, I looked into it, and he's totally right. Okay, that's, that's usually the thing about him. Like, he hurts your feelings, but he's actually really smart. He's like a million years old and he knows a lot more than you, you know. So I looked up, uh, I looked up a bunch of stuff um, that actually disputed what the Creative Commons said and what SPDX, the Linux Foundation, say. And as far as I can tell, yeah, you're totally allowed to do what he does, which is put things under public domain, which is a problem because on an NPM, there's no value that tells you, that tells anyone that public domain is, a, is, a, is like a license. It's not actually a license. It's copyright is a weird thing. So public, anything in the public domain is actually not copyrighted. Anything under an open source license is copyrighted. So if you say it's public domain, it's not technically a license. So there's no SPDX identifier for it. So yeah, but you know, what he does is totally valid. It just can't go into NPM. So I don't know, it's kind of like stuck there now. So I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that. But there's, there's, there's loads more. And then uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool though to get like, you know, 
a one-line package JSON metadata pull request accepted into like some of these packages. Like I got something, you know, in, in, in some pretty big uh, packages, and I felt like really proud. So I hope that people help me out with that, because um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of effort to solve for like all the packages in NPM. Now the other problem is not only do you have to like get these little tiny pull requests with the license property accepted, you also have to deal with dependency hell of getting all the dependencies in like older versions. Like I said, if you're if they're using like a, a lower minor, major version, um, how, you have to get those bumps and all the depend the dependence of those packages, right? Hence the dependency hell. <laughs> right. So anyway, okay, going on. Um, until then, I'm just sort of cheating, right? And what, I've, what I'm doing is I'm using my node license validator tool, and I'm just sort of saying, okay, all these 55 packages, just, just ignore that. And, and, and eventually, like, I'm manually tracking, like, okay, when they get fixed, you know, there'll be a warning. I'm, I'm trying to get a, a feature implemented in that tool that will tell me, like, when those packages actually are fixed and, and have a proper license, uh, and then I can take it automatically out of the, this, this cheating exemptions, right? But basically, what happens now is I, I, I whitelist my licenses and I whitelist my packages, and then I can pass my build because the coolest thing is to put this into your CI, right? This is like after after like testing and linting, you put auditing in there. It's a new thing, so you break the build, you don't break the law. <laughs> remember that, remember that. So and you know you can you can just uh, use use like a watching task or something to set this up so that as soon as you do npm install. It'll validate the whole thing again, and it'll tell you like, oh, you, you installed this dependency, but uh, totally illegal, right? <laughs> so uh, another thing uh, that uh, I found really fun was basically like just going around spamming everyone and annoying the hell out of <laughs> all these famous famous projects. So I, I had a, a number of uh, like this is like the last couple of days, uh, just like, spamming all these famous projects. Like Substack, probably I don't know. He doesn't. He's not even responding to me. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on there. But whatever. <laughs> uh, and then uh, just like a little bit of extra information that I wanted to give out there. Uh, I, I mentioned that public domain is like a quirk and I'm really not sure how NPM is gonna solve that. I, I, I don't know, I, I need to like reach out and start a, more, a bigger discussion about that because it's, it's really useful to put things into public domain. And if like, you know, if you're like working for the government and they have to like publish things into public domain, uh, sometimes legally it's like the only way they can publish uh, intellectual property, then like they technically couldn't create NPM packages and that would be a shame. Um, another thing is if uh, two caveats like if you're if you don't have a license for your stuff right if you're like creating private things or whatever uh, first thing put like the private true on your package JSON and then for license there's this exception this is not an SPDX license identifier but NPM explicitly allows this so this is like a, where they where they fudge the standard a little bit so sorry I don't know I'm using three but I think two also I think NPM2 supports it. I sent the documentation, so it must be two. Yeah. Um, anyway, and then uh, if you're using like a custom license, don't just don't do that. But if you really want to or have to, um, under duress or something, then you can put this special magic string in there that says C license in, and then a file name, and then the file name should hopefully exist. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, but that's the problem, right? Because like, all these kind of things go wrong. And if there's like a URL, don't do that. But if it's a URL, then you know, anyway. Uh, and then lastly, there's a couple of other tools. You know, if you if you just for some reason showed up here and you don't like Node, then please leave. But you know, it, you can also use version I and Pivotal License Finder. Uh, I found those. I haven't tried them. Why could? Why should I? Right. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's about it. Any questions about licensing in general or this tool in particular? Any other questions? Thank you. few announcements before we end. So I think Thomas, you have